Good morning, and welcome to United Church of Christ Longmont. My name is Sarah Verasco, and my pronouns are she and her, and on behalf of all of our worship leaders this morning, Robert Chelmstead, Reverend Amelia Richardson Dress, we have um, Karina up in the AV loft, and John Rosticus is moving about with sound. We also have um, some very special music this morning. Dirk Muse is a familiar name and face, but he's brought his friend uh, Zena Lee with him this morning. So we welcome you, Zena. Thank you for being here. There is a typo in the, um, in the bulletin. It's Zena, not Lena. And if you find any other typos, we'll give you a nickel at the end of the service. So um, no big deal. We're not worried about that. <laughs> just don't call her late for dinner, she said. So, um, friends, I want you to just um, allow yourself to arrive. This morning's service, our theme for this morning's service is patience. And perhaps you came today because you have no idea what that is. <laughs> or perhaps you came today because maybe you needed to hear something. And, and what we're going to be providing in terms of patience is uh, a little bit of scripture, some reflection, some images, and some music that are all connected to patience. So let yourself rest in these words of assurance that really are the foundation upon which we sit and stand this morning. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let that welcome rest upon you. Let's see what the Spirit will do with us in this time of worship. I'm just going to introduce this uh, piece that we're playing. It's, uh, it's called Far Away, and it's an Irish traditional waltz. And uh, the reason why we're picking it is because one type of patience that we all have to deal with is when things seem very far away. We have to wait for things that might not even occur in our own lifetimes. Now, friends, will you stand as you are comfortably able and join in these gathering words this morning? Trust in the slow work of God. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown to something new. Trust in what often feels like the slow work of God. Amen. 
Friends, I invite you to remain standing as we sing hymn number 433 in the black hymnal. It will also appear on the monitors or on your screen if you're joining from other places and spaces. In the bulb, there is a flower. Please be seated. Bailey, come on up. This week's reflection began at Get Air, which is a trampoline park uh, in, where are we? Longmont. Um, <laughs> got a little too much air on that one. And, you know, it really was a fun place to talk about patients. Uh, it provided a little bit of rest for me after all that bouncing around. But with some of our young people, we started talking about patients and some questions sort of evolved. And, and Bailey and I are going to share some of that with you this morning, uh, beginning with the scripture lesson that led us to understand where this word patience came from. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And, and so we have some questions that Bailey and I are both going to answer, and we invite you to also answer these questions as well. So the first one was, what is patience? This one I had to think about a lot, so I started by looking it up in the dictionary, and it says, patience is the ability to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So I translated that to kind of make more sense to me, and I decided it was waiting for something with peace and calmness. Nice. Because I, I looked it up too, and I didn't translate it. I was just like, well, accept or tolerate delay. I did change one word, delay or difficulty, without getting angry or upset. But I like what you did there, how you talked about what that was for you, about waiting. Well, that makes a lot of sense. What's our next question? So the next question is, sorry. If patience were literally a fruit, what could it be? I thought, although a lot of, the, although a lot of fruits take patience while you wait for them to ripen, if I were to compare patience to an actual fruit, I would have to say it's watermelon. Watermelon takes a lot of patience. It seems very hard and daunting on the outside when you begin <laughs> to cut up this big fruit. But once you bring it to the picnic, it brings so much joy. For example, patience is just like this. It may seem a daunting task at first, but if you can break it down a little, it can bring a sweet, reward. Nice. 
I thought that patient, if patients were a fruit, I couldn't decide between two, pineapple or pomegranate. <laughs> and I thought about that because while it is true that all fruits take a long time to grow, these for me are not ones to start cutting up if you're really hungry. It takes a lot of time, and in some cases you need to know how to get the fruit that you can eat and enjoy. And pomegranate for me is probably the most labor-intensive and least rewarding fruit that there is. But there is reward in being able to go to the store and buy pomegranate juice, which goes well with so many things. So when I thought of patience, I thought of something that has a lot of labor attached to it, which means you have to wait until you get to the goodness and the sweetness of the fruit. The next question was, why do you think the author included patience in this passage, in the fruits of the Spirit? I think, I think the author included this because it's very hard to show others the other fruits of the Spirit without patience. Mm. For example, you can't show love, kindness, or gentleness if you're not patient with others. One example is the people you live with especially family. <laughs> you most likely want to show the, these people that you love and care for them, but sometimes it can be hard to have patience with them. Maybe you want them to do the dishes or clean up the house a little, but if you can just wait a little and have patience with them, they'll probably feel the love rather than being impatient and yelling at them about doing these things. <laughs> There are other places in the scripture where the person who we think wrote Galatians also wrote other letters, and they said in one of those other letters that love is patient and kind. Um, and patience came right after. Love is patient. And so what I think of when I think of why this is included in the list is that we need to make space for other people's timetables sometimes. Sometimes patience means you cannot control uh, conditions or circumstances. And so what it requires is that we be patient. Um, even when a really good idea is brought for forward, I'm sure you've seen this in community life and in, in family life. When a really good idea comes, sometimes you have to let other people walk away and think about it before they can get on board. And for me, that's a time of patience. So, and not easy patience, but it provides the space for other people to go through their process. And it also allows for differences. There's an expression in the United Church of Christ, we always say, no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. But there's another one that I really like that says, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, diversity, in all things, charity. And I think patience creates space for diversity. Not everyone has to be like me or think the way I think. And there's a lot of places where we can have room for different thought and different ways of living and being. The next question is, when is it hard for you to be patient? For me, it's very hard to be patient when the dishes are not done and the house is not clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, my last name starts with a V, so I'm used to having to wait. But here's when I've noticed, I really had to think about this. Patience is really hard for me when I'm hungry, when I'm overheated, or when I've said yes to something, but I really didn't want to. So if I've said yes to something, I really don't want to do it, and then I have to end up waiting for it, it's like, why did I say yes? It was silly. The last one is, what are ways that help you be patient? For me, I think that like anything else, patience takes practice and little steps. And as you go, it'll get easier and easier. Sometimes I like to think about living in the moment rather than mm -hmm. focusing on the next step. So if I can take a deep breath and remember that I'm gonna enjoy the memories currently rather than just focusing singularly on the next step. I have a lot more patience. That's beautiful. I ask myself the question, whose timeline is this on? 
when I find myself starting to feel impatient, whose timeline is this on? And is it really something that I can or need to or want to control? But the other thing that I've noticed, and I wonder if this might be helpful, is that sometimes when I think I'm being impatient, and I am being impatient, it's actually underneath anxiety. For some reason, I'm anxious about something. Um, and this, this really comes up in our home when we have visitors coming. It's the strangest phenomenon that I've only been able to articulate in the last, like, five years, is that, like, that 10-minute period before people come, I start to get impatient. Like, when are they going to get here? What, you know, blah, 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 blah. And really, I'm just anxious. Um, and so I just have to remind myself, you know, like, it's okay. They're going to get here when they get here. The food's going to be what the food's going to be. You're going to do what you're going to do, but um, this is anxiety. Settle down. It's all going to be okay. Because there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture. So sometimes what presents as impatience could be something else. That's, that's the point of that answer. I think that's it. And I wanted to say thank you to my mom for helping me answer these questions and having patience <laughs> with me while I struggled through some of the harder questions. <laughs> and Bailey, I want to thank you for wrestling with these. These are not easy questions. Thank so you. thanks. It was fun to do that with you. I think one of the things that can be really misleading about having a list of the fruits of the Spirit um, or sometimes they're called the gifts of the Spirit, is to think like, well, not my gift. Um, and that doesn't really let us off the hook. I think it might be best to think about this in terms of if someone is being, the Spirit is present. And isn't that a beautiful way to think about it? Because we hear often that wherever you are, God is, or where two or more are gathered, God is present that where there is patience, the Spirit is with you. And maybe sometimes where there isn't patience, you're fighting against or we're fighting against something that we need to just let be. There is a dangerous element, um, and this is not an exaggeration. There's a dangerous element sometimes to the teachings of patience. I want you to hear this reading from the letter of James that is uh, subtitled, Patience in Suffering. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Scriptures like this, have been used to keep people in situations of suffering, in abusive situations, and in dangerous situations. So I think it's important to ask, is this a situation where someone is in danger? Where little by little someone is taking away, or in a very big way, someone is taking away their dignity? or their worth, or their value, or trying to. In this instance, I don't think patience is in order. In this instance, I think courage is the fruit of the Spirit. So if there are situations where, and this has happened a lot with women, with the LGBTQ community, the black and brown community, where people say, just be patient. We'll get to that. And sometimes the answer has to be no. Be courageous. Don't be patient. Don't tolerate things that are intolerable. So I just wanted to offer that. And then with that, as an understanding, I want to also offer some images of creation. And this goes to sort of our opening reflection. You know, we want things to go faster than they would. Think about if things had gone faster, 
that you thought were going so slow, would they have really turned out the same way? Sometimes things really do take time. And to illustrate that, I just want to show you this time-lapse video that Karina's going to queue up in the right hand. Imagine if things really grew that quickly. That would be creepy, wouldn't it? So that was a total of 57 days. It took eight days for something to sprout up from beneath the surface. I want to juxtapose that with the image that's on the cover of the bulletin, which is a suwaro cactus. You may be familiar with those if you've ever driven through Arizona or other places in the southwest. It's a very slow-growing cactus. And the growth rates, like all things, depend upon climate, precipitation, and location. But studies in uh, Saguaro National Park indicate that this cactus grows between one and one and a half inches in the first eight years of its life. Eight years, one to one and a half inches. At 35 years, 35 years, the cactus begins to produce flowers. Branches typically appear at 50 to 70 years and can take as many as 100 years. So the one that's on the cover of the bulletin is a very mature cactus, generally considered to be about 125 years old. Now most of our growing finishes before we're out of our 20s, really just getting into it for some even before 20, right? And then we start sort of going the other way. But it's not, it's not dramatic after those ages. So imagine the patience that that cactus represents. And I would invite you to consider that sometimes really good ideas, like the beloved community or the kingdom of God, take time to mature and to come into being but not with the conditions of light and soil and sunlight and rain and clouds and moon and stars. So there is something that can let us know that maybe there is progress that is just not seen to us. The thoughts that others have the experiences that others have that can bring them back to the table 
differently. These are just some things to consider. As you consider the gift, the fruit of patience, and how that can be a representation of the presence of God in our midst. Rainer Maria Rilke wrote a letter in a letter to a young poet, have patience with everything that remains unsolved in your heart. Try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books written in a foreign language. Do not now look for the answers. They cannot now be given to you because you could not live them. It is a question of experiencing everything. At present, you need to live the question. Perhaps you will gradually, without even noticing it, find yourself experiencing the answer some distant day. This happened for a friend of mine recently. She said all of her life she wondered why her mother stayed in a marriage that was really unhealthy. And she said, as a teenager, I used to say, why don't you just leave? Can you please just leave? Can we leave? And the mother never answered. But now, all these decades later, the daughter, with the mom who is long since gone, says, you know, it finally occurred to me that back in the 1970s, what options did my mother really have? Who would she have been? Where would she have gone? Her life choices and conditions were very limited. I'm not saying that it couldn't be done. What I am saying is that my friend said, I can now understand why she couldn't imagine it and why she couldn't have the courage to do it. It seemed so daunting. There were so few examples. So you can see with time that that, those early questions, which were good questions, suddenly lead to answers that were not able to be articulated in real time. I wonder what kind of questions you're living with now and being asked to be patient with, or what kinds of questions you have been patient with and now have new understanding around. Perhaps that's part of the gift of the fruit of the spirit that is patience. Dirk and Zena have prepared some more music for us, and they're going to invite us further into the experience of patience with their music. Maybe. <laughs> Please be patient, yes. Um, the, last, the last piece we played was um, a concept of something far away. Um, this, is this better? Okay. <laughs> Um, the last experience was about, um, it was playing far away, so we were talking about patience that is far off. Uh, this is um, a, a set of tunes that we learned from our friend Blaine Chastain, who's a music pastor in Greeley at St. Patrick's Presbyterian, and uh, he taught us these, and I think from the beginning, the first time I ever played this, he was like, you need to lay back on the beat on this one. It's really, it, don't rush it, please. And I played it for him and he was, he was really disappointed in me, I think. Or someday maybe I'll get it right for him. But on this one, the, the experience of patience is immediate. I have, to, I have to think about patience on every single beat. So really, this is a piece about Dirk's patience or impatience. <laughs> and she, you have to be very patient with me a lot, I know this. <laughs> we, we play in a, a trio um, uh, at festivals and things like that. Um, uh, we call it uh, Tria Slua, which uh, is Irish Gaelic, meaning three's a crowd.
Hello. My name is Claire Sanford. My pronouns are she and her, and I serve on the church council, and it is good to be together this morning. A very special welcome this morning to visitors and guests, and a welcome back to those who haven't been here for a while. There are clipboards on a table in the back if you'd like to receive newsletters or would like a name tag. If you're joining in online, there's an electronic version on the homepage of our website. Thank you to everyone who has participated in the Pastoral Relations Feedback Loop. Please look for the feedback loop in Mission Possible and Happenings if you haven't already filled it out. There's still time. Help us out with our 150th anniversary celebration after the service on July 24th. We are looking for volunteers to help with reception, setup, and cleanup. Interested volunteers, please email office at ucclongmont.org with your contact information. Children's Church for July will be next Sunday during worship. Please be sure to check the bulletin for up-to-date information. For online viewers, the bulletin is on our website homepage. If you'd like to support UCC Longmont financially, you can give online at ucclongmont.org slash giving or using the offering boxes on the back wall of the sanctuary. We are grateful for your gifts. The box is back there, <laughs> there too. <laughs> and yesterday, UCC Longmont hosted our third gun safe giveaway. This ministry began with offer grant funds and has grown substantially through community donations, including $55,000 from an anonymous donor who asked that we do whatever we can to keep guns out of the hands of children. Here's some information we gathered from yesterday's event. The overwhelming reason folks wanted a safe was because of children, including grandchildren, in their home. The very distant second reason was theft prevention. A strong majority of folks reported living in Longmont with a smattering of folks from Weld County, Boulder County, and the Denver area. We were 27 volunteers strong with folks from Heart of Longmont, the Boulder County DA's office, including Mike Doherty, and UCC Longmont. We gave away a total of 249 safes and our running total of safes given away to date is 573. Now you can. <laughs> and we'll have a few images on the monitors so you can get a glimpse of this ministry in action. Folks came to get a safe, and they actually ended up helping unloading vehicles. And then there was a scan of the crowd. If you're looking for ways to connect with this community, please check our website or our Facebook page. And I hope you can all find a, a cool place this afternoon to hunker down. We are turning to a time of blessing one another as we prepare to leave this space and this time together. But before we do that, I would like to invite you to join me in blessing Evelina. Evelina has been one of our uh, child care attendants back in this room back here. And they see me up here and are coming out, which I'm grateful for. I wasn't sure if they would be able to step away for a minute. Uh, Evelina joined us this spring um, at a referral from Addie, and we knew when she joined us that the time would come when she would leave to go to college, and that time has come. So, Evelina, thank you so much for being here with us for the time that you were. <laughs> We are so grateful to have you and grateful that we get to continue to have Addie for uh, the time that that works for her. So thank you and best uh, wishes for your journeys.
Philippians tells us, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. And so, friends, I leave you with this blessing. As you go forward, trust in the timeline of God. And as you trust in that timeline, find the balance between courage and patience. And in that balance, may you be able to do the work that God has called you to do. As you do that work, know that the light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you, and the presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. And friends, we're going to sing that scripture um, in our sing hymn book, number 200, The One Who Began a Good Work. It's also going to appear on the monitor. This is a new song for us, so be patient with yourselves and be courageous uh, in trying to sing it. We're going to sing it through twice. Huh? Perfect. And Robert's going to play it through first, and then we're going to try and sing it. So please stand if you're able and comfortable. Let's see what we can do here. Here we go. The one who began a good work in you. The one who began a good work in you. Will be faithful to complete it. Will be faithful to complete it. The one who started the work will be faithful to complete it. Let's try it again. The one who began a good work in you. The one who began a good work in you. Will be faithful to complete it. Will be faithful to complete it. The one who started the work will be faithful to complete it in you. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.
much for being with us, Dino. We really love when you do this.